So this is joint work, joint, <laughs> with Moran Feldman. So I have a few slides that you already saw, but just in case. Uh, so this is the definition of a submodular function, uh, both definitions. Um, and uh, we also have Oracle, and we have uh, monotonicity that you already saw uh, uh, in Yuval slides. And, and two examples to think about are coverage functions. These are monotone submodular functions. Uh, and also uh, cut functions, directed or undirected, are non-monotone uh, submodular functions. This is uh, good to think about. So uh, we are going to, to speak mostly on, uh, only on uh, two, uh, maybe the simplest uh, uh, submodular maximization problems. Uh, one is just the unconstrained, that you want to find the maximum subset that maximizes the uh, f of s. This is only interested, interesting uh, in the non-monotone case. And uh, uh, not the uh, metroid case, but just the cardinality uh, constraint, that you want to find the subset of size at most k. And this is, uh, you can think about max k coverage or max cut uh, with specified size. And we will not speak about other constraints like uh, metroid constraints. <coughs> so, so the main question I want to address here is uh, whether randomization is really necessary. This is a big question in everywhere. Uh, but we will speak about it uh, for submodular maximization. Uh, and and uh, there are, there are several uh, reasons to believe why it is necessary and unnecessary. So, so reasons for unnecessary, you, you really don't need. So in other fields of uh, approximation, uh, most of the approximation algorithms, I'm not an expert in de-randomization, by the way, but uh, most approximation algorithms can be de-randomized. So, so you really don't need randomization to get a good approximation ratio in most cases. And in general, uh, not necessary is the default answer. But in the case of submodular maximization, there are reasons to believe that uh, necessary is the answer. So one of them is that currently, most of the best known algorithms for all settings of, of maximization are all randomized. And no one knows how to de-randomize these algorithms. Uh, especially all algorithms like continuous greedy that are based on the multilinear extensions are inherently randomized because they need to sample in order to get, uh, to get values and to decide which direction uh, to go. And in general, when we have value oracle, it's kind of a black box uh, access to the function. We don't see the function, so it makes it really hard uh, to apply standard de-randomization techniques for those who know like conditional expectations, because we just we don't see the function. This is uh, the, the main problem. So I will speak uh, on two, uh, two on these two basic settings. Uh, one, one setting is the unconstrained. So for the unconstrained, uh, there is a half uh, approximation of uh, me, uh, Moran Feldman, Sefi Naor, and Roy Schwartz that I will speak in a minute. And there is a half upper bound of Wege, Mirokni, and Bondrak. Uh, so this problem is closed, except that this algorithm is randomized. So uh, you don't know if uh, it can be, uh, you can uh, get this, uh, result by a deterministic algorithm. For the cardinality constraint, it is uh, still, there is a gap here. So there is an algorithm which is 1 over e plus uh, small epsilon, which proves it 1 over e is not the right uh, answer. This, this is based on a, a kind of a merge of two algorithms. Both are randomized. And there is uh, some uh, difficulty result uh, uh, of uh, 0.491. So what I'm going to show here is some evidence that maybe randomization is unnecessary. So I'm going to show you how to de-randomize this algorithm. So I'm going to show a deterministic half approximation algorithm for unconstrained uh, maximization. For this result, I'm going to de-randomize only one of the algorithms, so I'm going to get not 1 over e plus uh, 
0, 0, 4, but just 1 over e, but uh, deterministic. And we like deterministic algorithm. This is a place to say, uh, maybe because we understand deterministic algorithms better. So we understand exactly what is happening here. And the nice thing is that this result, I will, it's uh, simple enough that I will actually show you the whole result, including all the proofs that Sefi uh, forgot to prove. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, oh, just, uh, so I, I will just fill in, I, I will show uh, a slightly different proof uh, than what Sefi showed here. And eventually, uh, after, I've, after I will show this analysis, I, I'm sure that here you will guess what, how to de-randomize the, the algorithm with just uh, showing you a different approach. And I will just uh, say what I, I'm doing here. So not exactly, but uh, approximately. Okay. So, so I, I will speak first on the unconstrained problem, a non-monotone function. And I will repeat the, the algorithm, the randomized algorithm, but just uh, I, with a different notation that will help us later. So, so here is uh, what I refer to as generic double greedy algorithm. What is the double greedy algorithm? So it starts from uh, two solutions. One uh, doesn't contain any of the elements. The other one contains all the element. And then it is doing uh, n iterations, and in each iteration, it makes uh, x uh, look more like y. So what happens? With some probability z that we will leave for, the, for later on to decide, we add the ith element to xi minus 1 and leave yi the same. With probability w, I just uh, remove element ui from yi minus 1 and leave xi the same. So here, here is a running example. So here is y at the beginning. It contains all the elements. Here is x at the beginning, no elements. And then with some probability, I decide to add uh, element 1 to x. And then I uh, decide to uh, remove, maybe probabilistically remove uh, an element 2 from y. And then... Uh, add the element 3 to, to x, and so on. So this is how this generic algorithm uh, run. And uh, it is generic because I didn't tell you what are z and what is w. And we will leave this to the end. We will just uh, analyze everything except for deciding uh, uh, at the end. OK, so is it clear what the algorithm is doing? So, so now it is also clear that at the end, xn is just equal to yn. This is also should be clear from just the drawing. So just for the notation to be, to be clear, so uh, x0 is the empty set, and then y0 is, is all the elements. Always xi is a subset of yi, and at the end, xn is equal to yn. And for now, I think that uh, you fixed all the random choices until, uh, until uh, iteration i. And now, uh, just to, to get the notation again in your head, uh, we have a state which is xi minus 1, yi minus 1. With probability z, we just add ui to x. With probability w, which is 1 minus z, uh, we remove uh, ui from, uh, from yi. Okay, so okay, I will just write the notation again on the board. And, and now I need one more uh, piece of notation. So I'm, I'm marking uh, what Sefi wrote as uh, delta 1 and delta 2. I'm writing ai as the marginal contribution of adding element ui to x. And bi is the marginal contribution of uh, removing ui from y. And you should think about ai. So the dilemma here is that the sum ai plus bi is more than 0. So you can, th this is a good choice because you can always uh, make profit, right? So think about ai and bi from now as just positive uh, numbers. So 1 and 1, 2 and 1. Something like this. This is, the, this is the really difficult case because you really don't know whether to include, to add uh, u to x or to remove 
uh, ui from y. Okay, so I wrote for you the notation. I will make this a bit higher. Uh, just so you remember, ai is just adding ui to, to x. bi is moving ui from y. z, it's not division. z is just the probability of doing this action. And w is the probability of doing this action. All you need to remember. Okay, so, so one lemma that... Uh, also, it's on the board, but uh, I, don't, uh, I will not go over it, is that actually you can make some profit. You can make progress upwards in every iteration. So AI plus BI is, is more than zero. And this is just from submodularity and uh, from the fact that, uh, that uh, YI is, uh, is a, uh, XI is a subset of, of YI. Okay, so this is simply by uh, submodularity. And now for the more interesting part. So here is the easy part. The easy part is what is the profit at the i-th iteration. So the profit is just the expected value of, of xi plus yi. This will be at the end. I will return x, xi and xn and yn. So this is what I want to maximize. So uh, this is the expected uh, of xi plus yi. And this is minus uh, the, the values of, X, uh, of f of xi minus 1 and yi minus 1. At this point, you're fixing xi minus yeah, 1. Yes, so, so for, for now, I'm fixing all, uh, all randomness until the i iteration. In a minute, I will uh, unfix it. So this is simple. It's just z, the probability of adding, times what you earn from adding plus w times what you, you, you get from removing the element, which is in our notation z times a plus w times b. Right? Very simple. Now the second part, uh, the second part uh, that I will need, I want to bound what, what I lose. So, so I take, as uh, Sefi uh, took, uh, opt x and one, x, y is, is the optimal solution squeezed between x and y. So, so you force op to take the elements of x, and you force it to remove all elements that y uh, already removed. Uh, so, so as you can see, uh, opt at the beginning, opt at the beginning is just opt. At the end, x is equal y, so it is just uh, x, xn and yn. And in the middle, it is just squeezed between xi and yi. So you should think about it as something that starts from opt. From, uh, it's, not, it's not exactly. I'm a bit cheating. But, and then decreases slowly until it, uh, it gets to, to xn and yn, which are not optimal solutions. It's not exactly, but uh, this is what you should think. So, so now what I want is to bound how much I lose. So how much I lose is what was the value of, of the optimal solution before at iteration i minus 1, and what it is the expected value at the end, after, after I, I did maybe mistakes of adding or removing elements. So what I'm saying that this is bounded by z, the probability of adding the element to x, times b, the marginal contribution of uh, removing the element, and W times A. And the proof is, is, uh, is again, very simple by submodularity. So if UI is not in the optimal solution, so when are we doing a mistake? We are doing a mistake if we, we add UI to X and then forced uh, opt to, to take X, to take the, the element. So uh, the decrease is just the probability that we did this mistake adding this element, times uh, um, the mistake of adding uh, ui to, to, to xi minus 1, and therefore forcing opt uh, to, make, uh, to take it. But then what I'm saying is that this is less than just removing uh, uh, ui from yi minus 1. And this is, this is very easy. This, this inequality is just from submodularity, because opt uh, x i minus 1, y i minus 1 is a subset of y i minus 1, and, uh, and it doesn't contain also u i, so it's a subset of this. 
So if you exchange, exchange this, I, I like to view it in, in uh, the different direction of adding uh, ui to yi minus 1 uh, minus ui and adding uh, ui to, uh, to uh, opt uh, to opt, then, then you see it's uh, just from submodularity. And, and in this case, th this is just the marginal contribution. This is z times bi. So if ui is not in opt, this is what you lose. If ui is in opt, similar argument will give you w times ai. This is, this is the same. And we are almost uh, to the end of the proof. So now, here is a question. So, so look from, from both sides. So this is the profit I make in the iteration. It's z times a plus w times b. We know that uh, how much we lose is less than the maximum between these two elements. Now, what if we can prove that this line, the second line, is at least c times this, uh, this line? This is all, all we need, I'm saying. So if we can prove this, then uh, unfixing the, the uh, probability, of, uh, we get that the expect, expected change in, in the value of our solution is more than c times the expected loss in opt. And now if, if you sum over all iterations, yes? No, 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 it's AI times W. Th this is the profit. It's Z times A plus W times B. This is the profit. And this is exchanged. Yes, this is exactly exchanged in the proof. Uh, uh, so now if you, if you unfix uh, all the randomness, you get that the expected profit is more than C times uh, the expected loss. If you sum, this is all telescopic. So you get that the expected of uh, the final solution, uh, xn plus uh, yn, minus the beginning, is more than c times the expectation of opt at the beginning minus the, the expectation of opt at the end. Right? If we can prove it with such a c. Oh. Um, and now simplify. This is the expected uh, uh, profit. This is just x0 is the empty set and y0 is all the elements. This is positive, so you can ignore it. And then this is c times the optimal solution at the beginning is opt, and at the end it's xn. And then what you get, you get here twice uh, f of uh, xn. Here you get minus another uh, c of f of xn. And, and here you get c times f of opt. So just exchanging this, you get that the expected value of your solution is at least c over 2 plus c f of opt. Right? Now I just need to decide what should be the z. Right? So, so summarizing, I now need to decide on, on the value of, uh, of z. And I want, if, if uh, I decide on the values and this has a C approximation, then I will get C over 2 plus C. And I want to maximize my C. So an obvious uh, solution, one obvious solution, is just uh, choosing uh, Z to be 1 if AI is greater than BI. Uh, this will uh, very easily will give you with C equal 1, right? And this is a deterministic algorithm that will give you one third of approximation, right? But there is a better choice, and this is the randomized case. So think about AI as, as non-negative. So AI prime is just AI, and BI prime is just BI. And then if you choose uh, uh, Z to be AI over AI plus BI, and w to be bi over ai plus bi, what you will get here is ai square uh, divided by ai plus bi, 
Here you will get bi square divided by ai plus bi. And here, these are both the same. They are ai times bi uh, divided by ai over bi. And this, this is just, uh, you can plug in here c equal 2, right? Uh, because uh, ai square plus bi square is more than 2 times ai plus bi. Just uh, so now, now we are uh, almost done. So we analyzed everything. So here is the main idea of uh, de-randomization. Just keep the whole distribution. This is a good idea everywhere <laughs> to get a deterministic algorithm. The slight problem is that this distribution might be very large. But ignore this minor issue. We will solve it in a minute. So, but what, what do we need if we want to keep, to maintain the whole distribution? So, so we keep a distribution at time uh, i minus 1. We have states, which is the probability. And then some uh, couple of x i minus 1, y i minus 1. And we have many of them. Okay? And now, uh, when we update this probability, we choose for each state z and w, right? And then we update the i to be uh, p times z and p times w. Uh, with z, we just add ui. And with uh, y, we remove ui, right? This is how, uh, if we want to explicitly keep all the distribution. So, but if we want a good algorithm, we found out that we need some, uh, something about this z and this w, right? So believe me that what we really need is to keep the inequality before just in expectation. You can view three slides uh, back and see that this is what I need. This is, this is the profit that I make in the iteration. And this is the uh, loss in opt. It's the maximum between the expectation of ZB and the expectation of WAI. We just need to keep this uh, with large enough C. So, okay. So, so here is the algorithm. So the algorithm, keep the distribution. The distribution initially is just one with probability one, uh, X is the empty set and Y is all the elements. Then make iterations. And then in each iteration, we can choose what z and, and w will be, right? What do we need? We need z for each, this is for each state in the support of the distribution. We need z plus w to be equal 1, right? And we need the expected profit to be more than twice the maximum between this and this. So I write here two constraints, right? So if I find z and w that uh, have this property, then I can update the distribution like I updated last slide, and it will give me half approximation for my proof, right? So, also, uh, why is P feasible, this solution? Because we already saw that we can choose Z and W in a way that gives you C equal to. So, it's, it's feasible. But we can choose any, any values and update uh, the distribution. So the problem, now, now we have the problem. The problem is that, right, the number of variables for each state, we have uh, uh, two variables for each state in the support. So the distribution might grow exponentially, right? Uh, twice in every iteration, right? And uh, eventually will become exponential. So what, what should we do, right? We, we, Update, we update only if we take some z that is larger than 0 or w that is larger than 0. So we really want a solution that have less variables that are more than 0, strictly more than 0. What is the solution? Hmm? Vertex. So just choose an extreme point, right? So if we choose an extreme point, Right, what we have here, the number of constraints here is the, the size of the support and additional two constraints, right? So the distribution will just grow by two, by plus two, every iteration. And this is the, the whole idea. So just to sum up, if, if we, the distribution, the support grows by uh, plus two every iteration, starts from one, 
then this is the size of the support in the ith iteration. Eventually, the size of the support is just 2n minus plus 1. And then in, in each iteration, we, we are doing order of i uh, or oracle calls. And then the total oracle calls is just order of n square. And this is it. So, so just a few remarks. So uh, the randomized solution only makes order of n oracle calls. So it is faster. So there is still advantage to the randomized solution. Uh, and also, it is possible to get even better, like di is less than di minus 1 plus 1. And there is no real need to solve a uh, linear program. If you look at it, you just need to solve some kind of a fractional knapsack problem. So it's really uh, fast in this uh, uh, way. So I have uh, uh, just three minutes, right? So, so just to tell you about cardinality constraints. So, uh, so just in the cardinality constraints, we uh, de-randomize the random greedy. So the random greedy, Sefi didn't have enough time. You just, instead of taking uh, the element, like in the monotone case, that is the best, has the best marginal contribution, you choose among the k, approximately, the, the k most uh, best uh, elements, and you choose randomly. And, uh, and this algorithm is uh, 1 minus 1 over e uh, for the monotone case, and also 1 over e uh, for the non-monotone case. And uh, here is the analysis of, uh, for the monotone case, and here is the analysis for the non-monotone case. Uh, almost. So the analysis is quite uh, uh, simple. And what we really need, if we look at the, uh, uh, this, we see that what we really need is, is essentially that the expected profit will be at least like adding a random element from opt, and that the probability of adding an element will be not large, not too large. So what we do in the algorithm is write an LP with these constraints, and again choose an extreme point uh, that uh, control the size of the distribution. And so this is uh, what, uh, what we do. And we get a slightly worse algorithm that makes order of k cube n uh, instead of order of k n. Uh, calls to Oracle calls. So just to sum up, so I still don't know if randomization is necessary for submodular maximization. Uh, but uh, now I have more reasons to believe that maybe you don't need randomization. Maybe you can find deterministic algorithms uh, that you can understand better and look at them and actually see what is happening. And the next uh, main candidate is, uh, that is uh, quite hard is to de-randomize the continuous greedy for the Matroid or Uval's algorithm uh, to see what is happening there. And in general, uh, de-randomized algorithms that are based on the multilinear extension will be really nice. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, for for the unconstrained, I need uh, like order of n square. No, but you know this is necessary. Ah, necessary. Who? I don't know. <laughs> uh, much weaker. Uh, uh, so pro I don't know if uh, you need the uh, linear. <laughs> no, no, don't. Uh, no, but but um, uh, we have some results that we didn't write, but. If you are willing to uh, compromise on losing some epsilon, then uh, you can get a better, like uh, n over epsilon square, maybe, uh, oracle calls. If we are willing to compromise on, on half minus uh, epsilon. 